go and take. A little round in the belly. That's what we need, four more of those. I didn't feel like I was really losing anything. Let's take a risk, roll the dice. And then this morning we went out and they were biting mm -hmm. right off the bat. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a real good one. I pulled up on one point, a new place that I haven't been to in the tournament. Caught a good one. That's like a five and a half. These fish went to get on a spinner bait and a crank bait. <laughs> That's the guy we're looking for. Welcome to the third stop of the 2018 FLW Tour, presented by Ranger Boats. Hello everyone, I'm Travis Moran alongside Rob Newell. Rob, we have 30 anglers left out of the 184 that started this tournament to fish day three today. Now all those 30 anglers are vying for spots in the top 10 positions that are going to move on to the fourth and final day tomorrow. Talk to me about this beautiful lake that's full of quality spotted bass that we call Lake Lanier. Yeah, Travis, you know, we just got out of Florida. We had two tournaments down there to start the year. Harris Chain, Okeechobee, two shallow bowls of vegetation. Now we go to the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, uh, beautiful Lake Lanier. It's what they consider a highland mountain impoundment. Really deep water, a lot of 70, 80 foot deep timber and spotted bass has become the predominant species there because of the introduction of blueback herring. These spotted bass roam around, eat up these big bluebacks, and they get big and fat. There's still some largemouth in the lake, obviously, but man, it's, that whole lake has just turned into a spotted bass factor. We've had sun the last two days of the tournament, which really seemed to help the blueback bite. Um, the blueback seemed to get up higher and the fish chase, and, and uh, after, uh, after the rain comes in, it really settles things down and gets with the clouds and the, and the no sunshine to bring the bait up. So hopefully we'll catch a few fish today. Lots of different keys playing a big part in this tournament. Holloman catching some big spotted bass day one and day two, but a guy that's close on his heels, the, the number two spot, Williams, fishing for largemouth. Even though he's his bag is made up mostly of spotted bass, he's looking for those largemouth kickers. It's gonna be a little clear and cool this morning to uh, start off with, and I'm probably gonna try to start off today and just catch a limit of uh, spotted bass if I can. Uh, got a few areas, got holding some spots, and. Um, we'll see if we can catch, you know, a decent limit, and then uh, we'll spend the rest of the day uh, going hunting the big greenheads. And then the weather playing a key role. All the anglers talking about the changing conditions and how they have to adapt. Rob, how do you see that playing a role today? Well, it's not only that Lake Lanier is a dynamic lake in terms of ever-changing and very almost random at times, but the weather that these guys are dealing with, day one, high wind, sunny, day two, it calms down, gets clear, slick, and now day three rolls along, it's still clear and calm out there. But we're supposed to have some clouds and rain rolling in a little bit later in the day. Question is, will that create another one of those feeding windows? It's supposed to rain this afternoon, it's bluebird skies this morning, calm, no wind. Hopefully we'll get a little breeze in a little while. Um, Personally, I think they're going to bite good today. A lot of different game plans are going to be tested today, but no one has a bigger target on their back than Bradley Holman. Good luck to you, Watson. Go get them. My bigger fish have been coming out of the pockets. Um, but I, I, I'm kind of doing this to get the limit. And, and then we'll go, we'll go a lot shallower um, after the sun gets up on it, heats it up a little bit. I love Lake Lanier. It's an incredible uh, fishery. It, uh, you can you can do whatever you want to here. You can fish shallow, you can fish deep, full of big spotted bass. You can get up and fish in uh, two foot of water. You can fish in, you know, seventy foot of water if you want, and, and fish live in all depths here. David Williams getting off to another quick start. Rob, he's really been about. Uh, quantity in the morning times and then working on quality Boom. later in the afternoon. That's a good way to start. If you look at that jig and that fish's mouth right there, that's a hammerhead jig. Tungsten, got a rattle in the head of it. The first day of the tournament, he had all largemouth. He's counting on largemouth kickers, but before he starts that largemouth game, he wants thing. to catch a limited spotted bass real quick just to get something in the live well, get safe and secure, and then that gives him the time, confidence, and comfort to go hunt those big heads all day long. And that fish moves Williams up the leaderboard real quick right there. 
If there's one person that can really give Hallman a run for his money, it's Williams and this largemouth pattern that he's going to be targeting a little bit later in the day. Yeah, look, Travis, I mean, Hallman's got almost a seven pound lead, and Williams is the only guy that can threaten that really, really fast with a five to six pound largemouth bass to cut that deficit immediately. Rob, all these anglers, they're trying to make it at least in that top 10 because, uh, like the saying goes, you cannot win this tournament if you are not fishing day four. And the top 10 will be moving on to tomorrow, the fourth and final day. The way the lake has changed so fast, the local guys are, are, are chugging along there, but they don't have the advantage that they thought they were gonna have coming into this tournament. What I've done out here at Lake Lanier this week to catch my fish is relied on two main baits. I've been throwing a little small three inch swim bait and I've been throwing a four inch Demiki Stinger on a shaky head. And I've been throwing both of these on eight pound line. The water's real clear using Fitzgerald rods and having to make really long casts and really fish slow to get the bites I've had. And for me, that's been the key is slowing down, making long casts with small line and hadn't had any issues landing them. Brian Thrift here, one of our most consistent anglers on tour. No surprise here, Brian Thrift back on top of the leaderboard. Uh, now approaching 47 days of consecutive limits. Yeah, Rob, that's quite a streak. That's catching five fish a day, a full limit for 47 consecutive tournament days, which is close to Cody Myers' 50, which is the all-time record in the FLW. That's why uh, Brian Thrift is in a league of his own. Thought he was a big one. We thank him, though. Now over to Zach Burge. Rob, Zach's having a uh, great start to the season after a pretty quiet couple years. Yeah, you know, Zach hit the FLW Tour with a bang in 2015. He won Rookie of the Year. Last couple seasons, had some decent season, but uh, you know, he and his wife had a baby last year, and sometimes it takes time to get acclimated to raising a new family and also carrying on your fishing career. But look, Zach's got winning potential. He has the potential to be a closer. He's won the Costa Championship. Uh, he's won another Costa. He can get this done. He just needs to get back on track. And it really looks like he's headed that way. Had an 11th place finish at Harris. Now he's back in the top 10. Looks like good things has happened for Zach. Big enough. I'm basically fishing a two mile stretch of river. It's right before the lake opens up and gets into the big open part and I'm, I'm fishing points that come out and dump into the main river channel. Long, gradual points that drop off in the river channel. I'm just bouncing around like six or eight of them that, that I have confidence in and I know I can get bit on. And I'm hitting them like five or six times during the day. That's the kind of spot you need right there. Bird's just very Bird, consistent. He's steady Eddie, buddy. Yeah. He's not going away. That's what it takes. Five of those. Solid morning for Zach Burge, who's hoping to leap over Bradley Hallman. But there's a lot of fishing to do on this third day of the FLW Tour, presented by Ranger Boats. The FLW Tour is brought to you by Ranger Boats. Still building legends, one at a time. Costa Del Mar, see what's out there. Yeti, built for the wild. TH Marine, from transom to trolling motor. Power pole, swift, silent, secure. And by BRP Evanrude. Learn more at evanrude.com. <laughs> think they're eating that thing. Number two. Oh, that's neat. It's Lake Lanier, and spotted bass have been the target for so many of our top 30 anglers. Only 10 will move on, and for Jeff Gustafson, the morning has been exactly what the Canadian pro needed. That changes my whole day around right there. Rob, here's a look at our top 10. It's in the unofficial leaderboard. A little bit of movement going on, but still Bradley Allman on top. Yep, Zach Burge closing in there. D David Williams, another, here, here's a name we haven't talked about today. Joseph Webster moving up in there. There's the Canadian influence. Canada, oh Canada. <laughs> Jeff Gustafson, Gussie, 
Coming off a great finish at Lake Harris, uh, second place, and now uh, showing some strong potential here at Lake Lanier. Yeah, Travis, I think we need to put Gussie in the overdue for an FLW win column. I mean, he's been close, he keeps getting closer, this is gonna happen for too long. I'm from Canada, so I'm used to clear water, fishing for smallmouths, and uh, I'm jacked to go out here and fish deep for these spots. It's in my wheelhouse. I knew the clearest water was down, gonna be down by the dam in the west end of the lake, and that's where I started started in practice and uh, I started catching fish you know pretty much right off the bat and uh, and decided to you know spend all my time looking offshore and looking deep. Jeff Gustafson having a great day looking to make a, uh, another top 10 appearance. What's impressive too he's cracked the code down there in that clear water with no wind. Look how calm it is and look what he's catching. Mm -hmm. Woo! Rob, we can't get too far into the day without a roadmap, and that's why it's time for General Tire's Roadmap to Victory. You bet, Travis. First thing you're looking at is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the lower end of the lake is gonna be a key player this week. That's where the biggest population of the biggest spotted bass live. Uh, the second thing, don't get too attached to any one area or any one bait. With the weather changing as much as it's changing, with the, as dynamic as this lake is, don't get married to an area. Keep moving around. And the final thing is, I gotta mention Marina Madness. And I mention that only because at some point during the four days, it's gonna get calm, it's gonna get still, and these guys are gonna have to kind of defeat those conditions with something. Marinas are a great place to do that. Lots of shade, lots of dark shade lines underneath the water, all kind of dock cables, plenty of structure for all of these spotted bass to kind of suspend it. High sun, no clouds, no wind. You know, they're just sitting underneath shade of the dock. And clear water, so it's not something I've done all week, but like I say, every day's been a little different, so. Bradley Hallman, trying to figure out what the fish are doing today. Every day, these fish make adjustments. Day one, he pounded on them on those, uh, on those points and, and that offshore bite. Uh, then day two, he was running, gunning, fishing all those top spots he had, switched over to the seawalls and things, and was able to put, put down 18 pounds yesterday, and now going to that technique a lot earlier than, uh, than he did yesterday sun kind of got out and it got slick and so I hadn't fished docks very much this week uh, during the tournament and today just and it just looked like it you know it was bluebird this morning the sun was out bright there was no wind and so I went into some docks started getting some bites big one big one I need this one he has a tour win under his belt. This guy knows how to go four days to manage his fish, to make those little adjustments needed throughout the day. Yeah, Bradley comes, he actually fished the Elite Series from 06 to 11, took a, some time off from bass fishing, got back into it in 16, and like won the very first uh, FLW Tour off. event that he fished. And uh, he's a very, very seasoned uh, pro. He knows, he knows what's going on here, and he knows that he cannot get too attached or too married to the lower end of that lake so quick in the day. Number two. Now over to Austin Felix. This is a big change from Florida, holding a uh, spinning rod finesse fishing to, to the power fishing uh, down those shallow largemouth lakes. I'm just kind of killing time for the sun to get up and to warm up some of my other stuff where I've caught big fish. I know this creek had some bait in it and we pulled up into it and there's a bunch of bait in there. When I ran my swim bait through it, I could feel myself hitting all the shad up in the back and I saw one little fish bust. So I'm sure there's a few in there, but it, there's nothing special about it. It's just got the bait in it. So there's a few fish in there. It's one of the things these herring do. They get in the backs of these pockets. Uh, I hear a lot about it. Uh, it's kind of a ghost thing to me. I've never been able to catch, you know, watch guys doing doing this very thing. But um, apparently, at times, the herring get pushed in the back of those what they call necks or, or back of the dead end pockets a like that. Better. A lot of times by stripers, and uh, when that happens, when they get pinned in the back like that, the spotted bass go nuts eating on them. Not really and little, you can get well in a hurry in one of the back end of one of those ditches when all that craziness is going on. Number three, another pound and three quarter, two pounder. And now over to Bradley Holman. There's the man to beat. And he's, he hadn't let up yet. Started with a seven pound lead and uh, he's only lost a couple of pounds. So 
Um, he's doing what he needs to do, you know, keeping him off of him and building uh, the fence. That's right, building the fence around him. He gets, you know, he bumps that up to 13 or 14 pounds and he's holding his own. Number three. Bradley Hallman is maintaining his lead, holding off a talented field of anglers here on the FLW Tour. More day three action when we return. I'm talking about solid spot. Welcome back here on Lake Lanier, brought to you by Ranger Boats. Bradley Hallman keeping the lead, but this is something he's gonna be fishing on. This is outside the marinas, these little sea walls out here. This has been a little trick he's kept a uh, secret for himself. Bradley comes from Oklahoma. Out there they fish a the, lot of what they call tire reefs. And this is almost like a tire reef for Bradley Hallman. Uh, these marina fences is what they are to block out, you know, keep the water calm back in those marinas. Carrying lakes, they're very conditional. And so each day as the conditions change, whether it's sunny, cloudy, rainy, windy, not windy, you, you kind of have to really forget what you did yesterday to some extent and just fish the conditions. And, and, I, and I tried to do that. All they're doing is swimming and they're chasing herring. That's all they're doing. And if the herring's not there, they're not there. Got her. Fence panda. Freaking fence panda. Right at the boat again? Yeah. I bet there's a little pack of them right there. We might be seeing Bradley Holman slowly uh, stretching his lead right now, protecting his first place spot. And uh, he has a chance really to put this thing away on day three and just show up tomorrow and, uh, and just try to put together a limit. Good. This is his game right now. <sighs> I've been calling them fence pandas all week because they're black and white and they look like Kung Fu Panda. A little round in the belly. Live on that fence. And here's a look at David Williams, our largemouth guy. Yep. Started the day in the number two spot. He was very optimistic about today in largemouth. There was a 10 degree water degree drop, you know, between practice and the tournament. And Williams said in practice, when it was warm, you know, he could see some up sunning, some largemouth, uh, got those bites in the, in the backs of those places. And he kind of felt like with the hit of that cold, it was gonna go away. But he said, if I could make it to Saturday and Sunday and we get that warm front come back in here and get the water temperature bump back up, he said, I, could, I think I could get largemouth back in the mix in a, in a strong way. I believe I ain't had one good largemouth bite, not even a three pounder. They ought to be munching right now. This weather coming in. I would like to see the weather stay a little warmer. This, these cool nights kind of backed a few of the fish out, but uh, we're gonna go, if we make it, we'll go out and try it again tomorrow and probably go do the same thing, just hope they buy it. There's one. That one came right at him. Mm -hmm. spot back here. It's kind of strange for him to be all the way back here. And look how much thinner that spotted bass is. <laughs> Williams right now is, is, is far up the Chattahoochee River. I mean, he's, he's up around Laurel Park area. That just shows you the diet. Uh, you know, you always hear about the herring and the spotted bass and all the ones are catching down the lake there have giant stomachs on them. This little cold game is so important, calling up ounces, ounces, and then especially if you're on that bubble uh, around the 10th and 11th spot. And I hop over to Brian Thrift. He was one I thought we'd never be able to get him to slow down in terms of fishing, but boy, he, he can really haunt him now. Something we kept talking about last year was how slow he was fishing, you know, that he was able to make that adjustment for that particular tournament, slow down, slow down, but he did it time and time again, and, uh, you know, that's why he is our reigning Pennzoil Marine Angler of the Year. It's still early in the season, Rob, mm -hmm. right now, okay? Sure. It's hard, it's hard sure. to really crown a champion at this moment, but uh, we've definitely got some big names up there, and Brandon McMill, you know, him and his brother really having a good start, doing exactly what they needed to out of Florida. Man, that, that Anthony Gagliardi is, uh, scares me for Angler of the Year as well. That guy's come out of Florida in a good spot, did decent here. The rest of the tour, really, you know, a Kentucky Lake, 
a Cumberland, he'll shoot up AOY leaderboard as well. Anytime Mark Rose gets out of Florida in the top 10 like that and has some of, some of his good stuff coming up, uh, specifically a Kentucky Lake tournament, I like the looks of that right there. And then uh, you know, obviously uh, Chris Johnson as well. The farther we head yeah. north, the farther we head towards yeah. him. And, uh, and he has nothing wrong with that because, uh, you know, being from Canada, he is used to fishing those cold water. Yeah. Uh, and We're going to end on a smallmouth fishery. So. Yes, yeah. So basically he can survive the rest of the season. It uh, comes right to him. Move towards his wheelhouse for sure. Oh, uh, ate it. Rod's pumping pretty good right there. Mm -hmm. Might be a little uptick on the bite going on here. Are you a keeper? Hey, we got number five. Thrifty putting a decent one in the boat. Can a pair of anglers from Oklahoma take over the top two spots after three days? The weigh-in starts now. Another good sack of fish. 14 pounds, 13 ounces, 16 pounds, and 6 ounces. Cody Meyer, wow! 17 pounds, 8 ounces. Gussie getting it done. I slipped up a little yesterday, and today I, I you know, I probably, I, there were just a lot more three pound bites today. I caught a lot of fish. Um, my thumbs are bleeding, actually. 17 pounds, 10 ounces. Jason Johnson, wow! Former rookie of the year. 15 pounds and one ounce. Zach Burge moves into second. I broke my personal best spot here like four times since I've been here, so I'm loving it. Uh, this place is unreal. It's an unreal fishery. The former FLW Tour champion, Bradley Hallman, 13 pounds, one ounce. Every day I've kind of done something different. Today I caught some fish off docks that I hadn't done, and um, so tomorrow I, hopefully I go out and try to keep an open mind and let's see what it takes to win. Evan Rude, big movers. For the first time, we had a tie. Jason Johnson and Cody Meyer. Jason moved from 17th all the way to fourth place, and then Cody Meyer, 20th to seventh place. Jason almost 18 pounds, Cody uh, just shy of 17. But what's cool about that is they're roommates. They used to travel together, so real good buddies. And only 10 anglers are left to battle it out this last day of competition, Bradley Hallman. This guy's made all the right decisions. Number two, Zach Burge. He is just slow and steady. Day four, all needs to be left out on the water, and one angler is gonna win up to $125,000. We're gonna hunker down in one area today probably hit a few more points in that area and, and uh, just see what we can muster up. Hopefully, hopefully 16, 18 pounds and, and maybe Hallman up here will slip up a little bit. Welcome back everyone. It's the fourth and final day for our top 10 who are gonna battle it out for one last shot at holding up up to $125,000 at the end of this day and valuable points towards the Pennzoil Marine Angler of the Year race. And Rob, we've already seen a lot of changing conditions over the last three days, and why not make it different for day four? Right off the bat, daylight savings, these anglers getting out an hour early today, and then also the heavy cloud cover with the rain coming in, we're having a lot darker conditions, which is really lending itself towards some of these anglers making a run at Almond. We've got totally different weather today. It's raining, it's gonna rain all day long, and clouds, and be quite honest with you it's been a struggle for me we had a couple practice days that were like this and they were they were not very uh, successful for me the window of darkness is opening up a little bit earlier what these guys have talked about all week the early morning window we need darkness we need low light they're getting a little bit of both they're getting an earlier start and a darker day it should extend this first feeding period in the morning by a couple hours, I think the action's gonna be good. Luckily, I'm from Canada, so the cold weather's not gonna bother me a whole lot. It's gonna bother these southern guys a little more. They're a little softer than me, I think. Now, Rob, with those feeding opportunities, do you think this is gonna favor uh, more of the shallow water anglers or the deep water? I think it's really gonna open the whole lake up. You're gonna, you know, not only is that is that spotted bass window gonna open up down the lake in that low light, but now, 
some potential for largemouth, especially if they get any kind of rain, bringing some rain, some won't run out in the back of those little ditches, that largemouth bite will turn on really nice for those guys up the lake. Well, Rob, I am excited to get this underway. The anglers are out on the water, so let's go join them. I'm just gonna stay right here close and get all the fishing time I can. The fish seem to be biting real early, and they seem to be biting later in the afternoon instead of doing a bunch of running around. I just feel like I will run across them sometime today. If I could just, I'm trying my best. I think I can catch 12 or 13. I've caught it nearly every day I've been here, 12 or 13 pounds. But I think if I could ever catch a six or seven pound large mile, I got a shot to win and I'm fishing large mile stuff. Saving some gas today, Joseph Webster, our 2016 TBF national champion fishing his sophomore year here on the tour. Yeah, Webster's not going very far, and uh, with so much darkness to start the day, looks like he's going to start with a really bright colored crankbait. Got him. What I did when I got here is I kind of idled these points, and they would be a sweet spot on one side or the other, and like a little rock row of seam running off a clay bank out in the pocket. And what I did then, I just picked up a Bill Norman deep little end crankbait, shaky head, and I just went to work on all these points. And believe it or not, the three best points I had was with them. No piece of right here. Putting a solid fish right in the boat early. Rob, this has got to be a good sign. Yeah, the other guys hadn't even got on plane yet. They're still running down the river there. Good start for Joseph Webster. The fish seem to bite early and late, and I don't know why. It's like when the day breaks, they bite, and then like two or three o'clock, they try to bite again, so. Two and three quarters, maybe. Got a bunch of underwater boulders that come out to about 15, 16 foot and a lot of times these spots will pull up at night feeding on crawfish and blueback herring and it's just a, a spot that from years of fishing it's a, it's a good area for them to pull up and feed at night and with this rain cover or this rain today I think that the fish may, may stay up a little bit longer than they would have if the sun was out. Jason Johnson the local boy here uh, probably the guy with some uh, huge potential because of how many different places he can fall back onto right now. Yeah, Travis, he knows exactly what this lake is capable of producing. It's happened to him time and time again out here fishing the many years he's fished. And if there's anybody in this in this lineup right now that wants to take a swing at Bradley Hallman, it's Jason Johnson. Yeah, a decent one. I knew Hallman and a few of the other guys would, not to say they couldn't catch a, a good bag again, but if they didn't change their pattern, they more than likely wouldn't catch, catch them the way they were catching them with this weather. There we go. A good one to get started. Well, they sure are pretty here. Probably a three and a quarter. Having that number one spot going into the final day can bring a lot of pressure. And uh, Bradley Holman has a big lead. That sometimes actually adds more pressure to the whole day. Yeah, and I like what he's doing here. It looks like he's uh, cutting his journey down south a little short. Going to pull over in some of these pockets nearby and uh, get his day started as quick as he can. He needs to get fish in the live well to feel confident about the rest of his day. First of all, the last couple of days at takeoff, the first hour or so of the morning has not been very productive at all. I've decided to start here this morning just because um, it is something totally different. Different section of the lake, different water color, doing something different and hoping that these fish would potentially bite in the morning. But, uh, so we're gonna give it about an hour is about all we're gonna give it. We're not gonna. That's why we came here. Travis, I like what Bradley's doing here. He's keeping an open mind. He's fishing the moment. I've said all along, these guys got to be detached from what has worked before. He's taking everything that's worked before, throwing it out, starting a new day with a brand new pattern. This is a good move on his behalf. We'll be back with more action from our final day on Lake Lanier and the third stop of the FLW Tour, brought to you by Ranger Boats. Boom. There's your three and three quarter, four pound spot. That's the right size for Zach Burge right now. About bag on time. Four more. It's the fourth and final day of this FLW tour event presented by Ranger. 
Rain and cloud cover has the fish biting on Lake Lanier. And not just in one part of the lake. Our guys are spread out everywhere and able to find fish. Birds started the day in second place, just under six pounds behind Holman. So he needs fish like the one he just caught to have any chance. Yeah, it looks like Holman's gonna stay put up there in that stained water in the river. Fish catching's happening up there this morning. He knows it. He needs to make the most of that while he can before he heads south and joins JJ and Gussie down south. I came back up Lake yesterday afternoon with about 30 minutes left, caught a fish and lost a fish on a spinner bait. It was raining, cloudy up here by takeoff. So last night I tied on two spinner baits and my game plan was go spinner bait fishing for probably just an hour and a half, two hours anyway. I wasn't catching them very good at the bottom end of the lake any of the days, the first couple of hours in the morning other than day one. So I didn't feel like I was really losing anything. Take a risk, roll the dice. And then this morning we went out and they were biting right off the bat. Got her. He has really made the best out of that entire lake. I mean, this guy has really just made all the, the correct decisions. That's the Bradley Holman I know right there. The one that's been catching these giant spotted bass down the lake has, um, you know, been a new thing for, for me uh, with Bradley Holman. But this right here, this is textbook oh, Bradley Holman. Here. You know, stained well, water like that, the back of a good. pocket, drizzling rain. Those jitters go away real quick when you have that thing in your live well. Because that's a good one. <laughs> that's a real good one. And here's a guy happy to be in the top 10 spot for a second tournament in a row, Jeff Gustafson, Gussie. He said you can literally, these fish are so spooky, you can literally see them, they'll come to the cone and you can see, see them swim off. Just from the, you know, the shadow of the boat or, you know, the, the presence. It's an oddball place. There's actually a little point that I just fished right here. And it's just sort of a big flat in front of me. And I, I found it. I was actually going to go one morning and practice and just throw a jerk bait along that riprap. And I was driving over there and I marked some, dropped down, caught a four pounder. I've kind of caught like at least one good one off this little spot every day. There's a good one. You know right away when you hook these ones that are a little better. A lot of the obvious spots, the obvious points have fish on them, but they were a lot harder to catch. They've been dropped on a bunch and they've been, you know, a lot of them have been, have been caught. So I, I tried to find as many little sort of side inconspicuous little spots and um, and it paid off, you know, over the last few days. Yeah. That is a three pounder, guys. That's what we need, four more of those. And uh, I'll be going back to Canada, happy dude. And now Webster. Webster's been fishing up the river all week. Like you said, just putting together, just kind of, you know, sneaking around down there, uh, bringing in his 16 pounds a day. He's fishing largemouth water, as largemouth as it gets, back of stained pockets, all he's caught spotted bass, and some decent ones as well. I've had trouble all week catching a largemouth. It's just I'm fishing largemouth stuff. It's just spots in here. I don't, I don't understand. I guess there's just not that many largemouth, but uh, we're just gonna keep a plugging right here as long as this bait stays around. We're gonna hang in here with it and see what happens. It kind of just started out fast. I mean, we left out this morning, it was nearly dark, and when I pulled up at the first spot, they was there biting, and, you know, I got 11 or 12 pounds, I mean, first stop, and I thought, you know, if I could get to 15, I got a shot. If he struggles, you know, if I could get a big bite, and it would help. Got him. Joseph Webster, another one of our anglers that was consistent. Scott Martin was the guy that said early on in this tournament, give me 16 pounds a day and see where I'm at at the end of this thing. And, and that's what Webster, he had 16 day one, 16 day two, and then just under 15 day three. So he's really, he's found those fish. Definitely gonna need a bigger bag uh, to, to have a chance at winning this thing. But I'm pretty sure he's comfortable with the way he's fished as well on this. Rob, Zach Burge struggling this morning, off to a slow start, but if there's one thing we've said about him all the past three days is he's been nice, slow, and steady, and it's really paid off. Yeah, Zach's been fishing the same six or seven places for three days now. I'm afraid his well might be getting a little dry. It might be time for him to look into fishing some new water. Now, all I need to do is say that, and then that happens right there. Nice. <laughs> oh my God, this is a big one. You gotta be. I start on my same places like I have every other day, and I've got a four or five pound bite every day, thankfully up until today. It was kind of a 
dry spell until maybe 10, and then I pulled up on one point, a new place that I haven't been to in the tournament, and I finally caught one. I caught a good one. Boom! That's a mega spot right there. That's a beast. Grabbed it on the fall. That's like a five and a half. Look at that thing. Zach Verge is really making a, a move right now at that gap between him and Holman with that beautiful five pound spot. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that the Burge surge is on. The FLW Tour is brought to you by Lawrence HDS Carpet. Find, navigate, dominate with Lorance. Real Tree Fishing, the official pattern of FLW. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. General Tire, anywhere is possible. Polaris, the world leader in off road vehicles. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly. Just men and women, at least. I've had four bites on this one point. I've caught two of them. This is a good one. Yes. We're having a, a grinder today, so, but this is gonna upgrade me at least a pound, I think. That'll be worth a few bucks, I think, today. Another good one. Day four action has been absolutely crazy. This lake has been showing great potential all week long, and today is no exception. Yeah, already three guys knocking on the door of 16 pounds. They're putting some pressure on Bradley Hall. The thing that I was a little concerned about, and it may cost me this tournament too, is they're post spawners. They're coming in, they've got great big heads, they're large mouths, and they have no body, no weight. They just don't weigh very much. I don't even think that sucker will help. I need to be calling by pounds. That one got rid of five. Every ounce can, I'll try it. Birds is falling off the pace a little bit. He's not giving up on those big spots out there. He has six spots he's particularly in love with. He's been rotating. And, and to hear that he finally broke out of that and said, you know, I'm gonna go run similar looking stuff. This is how magic happens in, in tournament bass fishing right here. He's getting away from his comfort zone, exploring a little bit on something that is similar, starting to fish new water, that's what makes these guys so good. I just decided to make that move. I just come around the corner and try to fish some stuff that looks similar. You know, this look, this is another point off one of these islands that's got the creek channel swing. We'll take our... There's another one. It's a good one. We've really talked about him just being... Uh, steady. Steady Betty out there. Oh, Bradley. <laughs> and, and that shows how keyed in he is to these fish. Spanning his water, he knows what he's looking for. He's really uh, found what, he's, what he needs, the elements he needs on these points, and then goes, okay, that one looks very similar to what I've been catching him on, moves over and jackpot. Might be going now. That's a three and a half. Lanier's a lot about timing. I mean, you can go down the bank and put the trolley motor down and fish, and you might run into a few, but if you're targeting key isolated places is all about the time and when the fish are pulled up they're ready to feed the baits there just all the ingredients are right that's a big one with the weather and the water rising it got them biting too good and so then it hurt me in this aspect that random people could fish random places and catch them really good instead of having to know those little key key spots that i know i think as fat as they are they wouldn't they wouldn't be as mean but I guess come, with fat comes muscle too. God, it don't get no funner. He's all the way down at the other end of the lake. That's what Jason's after. He knows they live down there. He's lived his life here on Lanier. He knows the right places to go. Talked to him last night. He is the guy that is most fired up about catching Bradley Holman. Well, if I could get a five pounder now, but it would, it would just give me a chance to win. Go back to Danger Man here. Joseph Webster, just having fun this week, man. Not burning any gas, staying, staying close. Just having fun. Uh, conversation with him last night was he didn't have, wasn't worried about anything, wasn't concerned. Just really looking forward to going fishing because he said, I'm catching them all day long. Got him. 
Either I've got him foul hooked or this is a big one. I knew the weather was changing. It was starting to warm back up. And when it warmed back up, these fish went to getting on a spinner bait and a crank bait. So just today, that's what I did. I just slung a crank bait, never hardly even put it down. I got her. Yes. Webster with a great fish here. On the old uh, lime green the crank bait there. Unofficially, we've got Webster with a three, a four, a three and a quarter, a three, and a three. All these anglers have just been <laughs> making some things happen. That's the guy we're looking for. It's been a barn burner. Coming down to the wire, don't go away. You're not going to want to miss this conclusion. Got her. That's the guy we're looking for. Might be going down. You know, I was throwing a bait that was probably going 10 foot deep, but I was only fishing in six or eight foot of water, so I had to really slow it down. I had to just kind of crawl that crankbait up the rocks, and when it come off the other side, they'd get it. Big one. Think so. Yep. I think a lot of these bigger spots up here had been released, trying to spawn. They didn't want to swim far. First one of these little points they come to, that's where they're setting up. Bigger than that, ain't he? These guys are hard to beat. If I could beat these guys, it would be a real special time. Let's go. Chris Showtime Jones. All right, what's up? Gainesville, Georgia. $125,000 payday on the line. Are you guys pumped up or what? Jordan Osborne. A five bass limit getting it done on Championship Sunday. Two good ones, three good ones, four good ones. A five bass limit for today for Austin Felix. 10 pounds, 14 ounces. You guys, look at this crowd. Five today for California's Cody Meyer. I love catching big spotted bass. This is the best tournament spotted bass lake in the entire country. Braxton Setzer, a five-ass limit for Montgomery, Alabama's Braxton Setzer. Woo, it's going to be close. 15 pounds, 13 ounces. You got him by eight ounces. Blessed to have these, these two finishes, uh, you know, back to back and, and really looking forward to the rest of the year. To take the lead from Alabama's Braxton Setzer, you need 15-8. Let's see him. A five-ass limit, 17 pounds, eight ounces, is your new leader, Jason Johnson. A five-ass limit. So you're looking for 16.9. You know this is going to be close. 16 pounds, eight ounces for Jason Johnson. Gussie, you got that momentum train rolling, man. Another top 10 for you. You ready to get this ball rolling? Yeah, let's do it. Number four and five for Keywatton, Ontario, the Canadian Jeff Gustafson. A former rookie of the nice year, ball, Zach yeah. Burge, who's been to two Forest Wood Cups. Wow! The Magnal, 16 pounds even. You're the new leader. You got him by eight ounces. This is the championship <laughs> moment, our crowning moment. And there's one left. It's Zach Burge versus Bradley Hallman for this title. For the win, you need 10 pounds and seven ounces. A five pass limit. Looking for 10, seven, five today for Bradley Hallman worth 13 pounds, one ounce. Your champion is Bradley Hallman. Wow. He gets it done on championship Sunday. His second tour victory and his second wire-to-wire -wire win. 
Yeah, it was a phenomenal week. That, that first day, like I said earlier, was just incredible. It was just a great, great week. Uh, boat was great. This lake is just phenomenal. Can't wait to come back. Roadmap to success. How'd you win this thing? And this morning getting up, I knew. I was like, man, with this cloud cover, I need the sun to position those fish on the docks and I wasn't going to have it. Um, so I had stopped a couple of times just coming back to take off the spinner bait and caught a couple in the last oh, 10 okay. minutes coming in each day. And so I just ran oh, right wow. over here and I fished the river good. all day and that 13 pounds came from with less than three miles right here. For Oklahoma's Bradley Holman, the six-figure payday.